this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this round dish scrubby using the Tunisian simple stitch. And we're going to use tool to make this round dish scrubby. I wanted to make this dish scrubby look like the starlight mints. In this tutorial, I showed you how to make these round dish scrubbies. In this one, we're going to use two colors to make these look like the starlight mints. Now, if you have not seen the tutorial on how to do this dish scrubby, I'll leave an i card in the corner that you can click on that will bring you directly to this tutorial on, on how to make this round Tunisian dish scrubby. And if I also have a tutorial on how to do the Tunisian simple stitch. And I do recommend that you watch that first before you watch how to make this dish scrubby if you've never done the Tunisian simple stitch before. Okay, so in the previous tutorial where I showed you how to make this round Tunisian dish scrubby, we worked with short rows, and by working short rows, that's how we get this dish scrubby to be round when working with Tunisian crochet. Thought it'd be fun to make some that look like the peppermint candies. This is going to be the same idea. We're going to do it the same way. We are going to use short rows and do the same exact stitches, but we're going to be changing colors. So we're going to start off with a magic ring, just like we did for this dish scrubby that I showed you in the previous tutorial. The rows that are in white will be the regular rows, and then the green or the red, those will be the short rows. You have to have a full row, then a short row, a full row, and a short row. We start off with we start off with a full row, which is going to start off with the white, and then we'll do a short, full, short, full. And when we did this one, we ended with a full row. We need to end on a short row for this one. So when we weave it in, we're going to have to do it a little bit differently than this one. We have to end on a short row because if we do another full row at the end, what's going to happen is we're going to have two rows of white side by side, and it will be much wider than you know the other rows, and it won't look right. So that's why... This one's just going to be a little bit different where instead of having 24 rounds and ending on a full row, we're going to have 23 and that 24th row is going to be a short row. So it is 24 rows, it's just it's going to end on a short row instead of a full row. So let's go ahead and get started and we're going to start off with some tool that's in the color of white. Now for this for this dish scrubby, I'm using a spool of tool that is six inches wide. Now this one is a, a larger roll than I normally get. I normally get these ones here, and these are six inches wide and 25 yards. Where this one is the same width. It is six inches, but it's a larger spool. So we are going to work with the entire width of this six inch spool of tool. This, um, we're not going to cut the spool. We're not going to cut the tool in half or anything. We're just going to use the entire width of this six inch wide spool of tool. So I'm just going to crunch it together like this and crochet with it that way. Real easy. No need to cut the tool. You just get yourself some spools of tool and you don't have to cut it. You just work right from the spool. Really easy. Okay, so we're going to start off with a magic ring, and we, and we do want to leave a good sized tail. That way we can weave the last two rows together, because when we work with this scrubby, the two rows are not going to meet together. We're going to have to seam them together, just like I showed you in this one. So you definitely want to leave a little bit of a tail, so that way we can sew it together and seam it together at the end. I'm going to start off with a magic ring. For this Tunisian dish scrubby, I'm going to use a regular size crochet hook. Now you, you don't have to go out and buy a set of Tunisian crochet hooks if you don't want to to make this dish scrubby because it's not going to have a lot of stitches on it. So you can use a regular crochet hook to make this Tunisian dish scrubby. So the size crochet hook I'm going to use is the size K 10.5 6.50 millimeter crochet hook. First thing I'm going to do is start off with a magic ring. If you haven't done a magic ring before, let me go ahead and show you how to do it. You want to have the tail pointing towards the table surface, and then you just take it and wrap it across your fingers, 
and wrap it over the top to make like an X mark on the top of your hand, right here on the top of your fingers. And then you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to point the hook downward toward the table surface. So you just point it down towards your fingers. And we're going to insert it underneath this strand right here. And then we're going to pull that strand here underneath. And then you just turn your crochet hook up. And then we're going to insert it underneath this strand just like this and then we're going to pull that through this loop to create our magic ring. Okay and there is our magic ring and I did leave a good sized tail so that way I can seam the two rows together when we're done making our dish ruby. So we're going to start off with five chains and you want to chain these five chains fairly loose but with the same tension. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I have my five chains. Instead of inserting the hook into the chain this way, we are going to turn it over and we are going to work into the back bumps of the chain that are right here. Sometimes it's called the spine of the chain. So these back bumps are right here working into those when we pull up our loops. So the first thing we need to do is we need to start off with our forward pass. For the forward pass we need to collect loops onto the hook. So we are going to skip this first chain closest to the hook. So we're skipping that first back bump. And then find the second back bump of the chain, insert your hook into it. And then you're going to tool over or yarn over but we're using tool so I'm going to say tool over. Tool over pull that tool over underneath to pull up a loop and then we're going to leave the loop on the hook. And then find the next back bump of the chain, insert your hook into it, tool over, pull that through and leave the loop on the hook. Find your next back bump, tool over and leave, tool over and pull that through and leave the loop on the hook. And then we have one more back bump here. We're going to insert our hook into that tool over and pull up a loop. So we started off with five chains. So we should have five loops on our hook. And then that loop there, that was the, for the magic ring. We don't work into that one. Now what we need to do is for this forward pass, we insert our hook into the center of the magic ring yarn over or tool over and pull up a loop through that magic ring. And then you'll see that you have six loops on your hook. Now we need to do a return pass. So to do the return pass, we are going to start off with tool over and pull through two loops at a time. Okay, so now normally when you do um, Tunisian simple stitch, when you begin your return pass, you would yarn over and pull through one loop to begin. But for this Tunisian dish scrubby, because we we're working a circle for our dish scrubby, we are going to tool over and pull through two loops to begin our return pass. Because we're working a cir in a circle, because we want to make a circle plus we are working into a magic ring. So that's why so that's why we're going to tool over and pull through two loops to begin our forward pass. And then we're going to tool over and pull through two loops at a time until we have two loops remaining on our hook. If we were working with just one color, then we'd pull through two loops at a time until we had one loop on the hook. But we're going to change color here before we do our short row, which is our next row. So that's why I'm stopping before finishing this last stitch. We need to switch to the second color to make the short row for our little peppermint candy dish scrubby. Okay, so when I pull through these last two loops for this row, I'm going to change to the new color to pull through. So that way, I've completed my full row with the color white 
and I'm ready to begin the new row with the new color and it's in the right place to start our row. This next row is going to be a short row so what that means is we're going to be stopping short of finishing the last stitch. What we're going to do here is the same thing we did for the full row. We're going to do a forward pass and pull up loops in each of these vertical bars. So these here are the vertical bars. So this stitch, this loop here that counts as a stitch is in line with the stitch on the edge. We're not going to be working into the edge stitch. The edge stitch counts as a stitch. So this is our first loop in line with this first stitch which is on the edge. So we have one, two, three, four vertical bars and then the magic ring. So since this is a short row, we're going to stop short of finishing this this row. So we're going to work in the next one, two, three vertical bars and then we're going to stop short of finishing the row. And then we're going to do a return pass before finishing the row and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so find your first vertical bar and this edge stitch this doesn't count as a stitch, so when I say first vertical bar, I don't mean the one on the edge, I mean the next vertical bar after that. So find your vertical bar, insert your hook underneath it just like that, tool over with the green, pull up a loop, and we're going to leave the loop on the hook. Find your next vertical bar, insert your hook underneath it, tool over and pull up a loop, and leave the loop on the hook. Then find your next vertical bar, tool over, and leave your loop on the hook. Tool over and pull up a loop, and we're going to leave the loop on the hook. So you can see we have four loops with the green tool. So we're going to we're not going to work that last vertical bar, and we're not going to work into the magic ring. We're going to stop short of finishing this row because we're going to do a short row for this row. So now we finished our forward pass for this short row. So now we need to do a return pass. So we're going to tool over and pull through two loops. Tool over, pull through two. And before pulling through this, these last two, we're going to change to the new color, which is back to the white. So what we're going to do is we're not going to cut the tool for the green and we're not going to fasten off with the white tool. We're going to leave both colors connected because we're going to keep working and alternating our rows between the two colors. So what we're going to do here is when you switch to the new color we are going to put the old color pull the, the green up this way and then pull the white tool so put your take your green tool and shift it to the right and then tool over with the white and then finish that last stitch by pulling through those last two loops. And now we have completed our second row. We've completed our return pass for our short row. So now we're ready to do another uh, third row, which is going to be a full row, because we're going to alternate between a full, then short, then full, then short, and do that all the way around, ending with a short row with the color green. Here's your edge stitch. We're not going to work into that one. Find this, this next vertical bar that's next to the edge. Insert your hook underneath it, just like that. Tool over with the white tool and pull up a loop and we're going to leave that loop on the hook. Find your next vertical bar here. That's the green one right here. Insert your hook into it. Tool over and pull up a loop. So for this forward pass and this return pass, for this forward pass we're working with the white tool. And then now you can see that this vertical bar drops down into the previous row. That's because we did a short row. So now we're going to work this vertical bar and this one. And those are technically in the first row. So now insert your hook underneath this vertical bar that drops down into the first row. Tool over and pull up a loop. 
And then here's your next vertical bar that's just before the magic ring. So insert your hook underneath that vertical bar, tool over and pull up a loop. You'll see that you have five loops on your hook. So now, once you have five loops on your hook, now you should have five loops on your hook just before you get to the magic ring. If you have six or four, then you know that something's not quite right, that you'll need to check to see if you missed one or added one somewhere. So then, because if you have six, that means you have an extra stitch. If you only have four loops, that means you missed one of them. So now, we are, now that we know we have our five loops on the hook, we are going to insert our hook into the center of the magic ring. Tool over with the white and pull up a loop. After you insert your hook into the magic ring and pull up a loop, you'll have six loops on your hook. Now we're ready to do our return pass. So we're going to tool over and pull through two loops. Tool over, pull through two. Pull over, pull through two. Pull over and pull through two. And you stop when you have two loops on your hook because for the next row, we're going to change back to the green. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take the white tool and we're going to pull it over to the edge here and then pull the green up underneath it. So pull this to the side to the right. So pull the white tool to the right. Pull the green up underneath underneath that tool. And then, because that locks it in place for you right there. And then, pull that loop with the green through those last two loops. And that completes your return pass for the full row with the white. So we have three rows. We started off with a full, then we did a short row, and then a full row. So now we're ready to do another short row with the green tool. So what, what we're going to do is we are going to find this next vertical bar and start our hook underneath it. And you, with, when we're working, when I showed you this one with the green, um, it may not have been as easy to see the vertical bars, but because we're alternating, it should be really easy to see the vertical bars in this tutorial. Okay, so I've inserted my hook underneath the vertical bar. I'm going to tool over and pull up a loop. Find your next vertical bar, insert your hook underneath it, just like that. Tool over and pull up a loop. Find the next vertical bar, tool over and pull up a loop. Now, this is a short row, so we're going to stop short of finishing this last stitch. So we should have four loops when we're working a short row. So, so when we have our four loops, we know that we have finished our forward pass for the short row and there's one stitch to work. We're going to stop short of finishing the row. So now we're ready to do a return pass. So we're going to tool over with the green, pull through two loops, tool over, pull through two again. And now you have two loops left. So now we need to switch back to the white tool. So we're going to take our green tool, pull it to the right here, and then pull up the new color. So you want to put the green uh, on top of the white, in other words. You're pulling the white color up underneath that strand of green, and that kind of locks the two colors together. And then see how it crosses over it, so it locks it in place and keeps it nice and um, taut for you. That way it keeps it in place for you, nice and neat. So now pull that through these two loops to finish your return pass. So with the Tunisian um, crochet, we need a forward pass and a return pass to complete one row. And this, um, this scrubby is really easy. We're just doing the Tunisian simple stitch. Now we need to do a full row. So now we're going to insert a hook into this next vertical bar right here. Tool over. Pull the tool over underneath that vertical bar to pull up your loop and leave your loop on the hook. Because when we do the forward pass, we collect our loops. And when we do the return pass, we work the loops off the hook to work our stitches. And for this Tunisian discovery, the stitch that we're working is the Tunisian simple stitch. Find the next vertical bar, insert your hook underneath it, 
tool over and pull up a loop. So now you can see we have three loops on our hook. Once you have your three loops on your hook, when you're working a full row, you can see that your row kind of ends here, it kind of drops off, and then you'll see this stitch right here. Then you'll see this vertical bar here. It looks a bit longer than this one, and that's because it stretches from the end of this short row down to the previous row. And then there's that last stitch of the row in the previous row that we left unworked because we wanted to do a short row. So we're going to insert a hook down underneath that vertical bar that's extending into that previous row. So you hook underneath it and tool over and pull up a loop and leave your loop on the hook. And then here's the vertical bar from the previous row that we left unworked when we did our short row. We didn't work into this one. So now we're going to work into it here on our full row. So you hook underneath it, pull up a loop. You'll see you have five loops on your hook. And then insert your hook into the center of the magic ring, tool over and pull up a loop. After you insert your hook into the magic ring and pull up a loop, you should have six loops on your hook. So now what you're going to do is you're going to tool over and pull through two loops at a time until you have two loops on your hook. And that's because we're changing color. If we were not changing color and we were working with just one, then you would tool over and pull through two loops at a time until you had one loop on the hook. But since we want to change color when just before we end this row, we will tool over and pull through two loops at a time until we have two loops on the hook. So I'm going to go ahead and pull through two to begin my return pass. Tool over, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, oops, tool over, pull through two. And now I have two loops remaining on my hook. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this tail of the working tool with the white over to the right edge here, along the edge here. That's the edge away from the magic ring. I'm pulling it to the right. And then I am going to pull up a loop with the green yarn. So the green, the white yarn is on top of the green working tool, in other words. See here? So the white tool, pull off to the right here. And then pull up the green tool underneath it. So it kind of locks it in place for you. Right there. Just like that. See how the when we pull up the green yarn with the working tool, it's actually crossing over the white. If you look at it from the back. All right, tool over. So tool over with the green and pull through these last two loops to finish our return pass for the full row. So now we're ready to begin our next row with the new color. And we're gonna work a short row with this green tool. We're gonna stop short of finishing the row. We're not going to work that last one. So we're going to work underneath the vertical bars until we get to this last vertical bar and then we're going to stop at that point and then do our return pass. Okay so let's go ahead and start our forward pass. Start our hook underneath this vertical bar, tool over and pull up a loop. Find your next vertical bar, insert your hook underneath it, tool over and pull up a loop and leave your loops on the hook. Because remember when we do a forward pass, we are collecting our loops, we leave them on the hook. When we do our return pass, we work them off the hook. So when we are working our forward pass, we're working towards the magic ring. And then when we work the return pass, we're working away from the magic ring. Okay, so we have two more vertical bars here, but this is a short row. So we're just gonna work this next one and stop short of finishing the row. So find your next vertical bar. Insert your hook underneath it, tool over and pull up a loop. So now there's one more vertical bar but we're stopping short of finishing the row since we're on a short row. So you can see we have our four loops. So we're going to tool over and pull through two, tool over, pull through two, and we're going to stop here because we want to change back to the first color with the white tool to finish this return pass. So now we are going to pull this tool with the green to the right of our work and then pull up a loop and then pull this and then pull up a loop with the white tool to finish our return pass. 
So now we're ready to begin the next row with the white tool. So now what we're going to do is we are going to do a full row. Okay, so we find this next vertical bar here. Insert your hook underneath it. Tool over and pull up a loop. Find your next vertical bar. Insert your hook underneath it. Tool over and pull up a loop. And then you can see that we have three loops on our hook. And the next vertical bar is actually down here. It stretches into the previous row. You see how this vertical bar looks a little bit longer than this one? And that's because it stretches up from the previous row. So now we're going to sort of hook underneath that vertical bar. Tool over and pull up a loop. Insert your hook into the next vertical bar. That's the vertical bar just before the magic ring. Tool over and pull up a loop. We have five loops on our hook. You should have five loops on your hook just before the magic ring when you're working a full row. And then you are going to insert your hook into the center of the magic ring. Tool over and pull up a loop. And now, after pulling up a loop in the magic ring, you should have six loops on your hook. So now we're going to do our return pass for our full row. So we're going to tool over and pull through two loops at a time until we have two loops on our hook because we want to switch back to the green tool. So that's what it looks like so far. Okay, so we are going to finish this last stitch with the green tool. Okay, so I'm going to pull the working tool with the white to the right here. And then I'm going to pull up a loop with the green and pull that through those last two loops to finish my return pass. Now I'm ready to do another row. And this row is with the green is going to be a short row. Now what we're going to do is we're going to find our vertical bar. We're not working into the edge stitches here. We're going to find the next this vertical bar here. Insert our hook underneath it. Tool over and then pull up a loop. Find your next vertical bar. Insert your hook underneath it. Tool over and pull up a loop. Find your next vertical bar. Insert your hook underneath it just like that. Tool over and pull up a loop. So we have four loops on our hook. We're going to stop short of finishing the row. So we're not going to work that last vertical bar. So now we're ready to do our return pass for our for our short row. So we're going to tool over and pull through two loops. Tool over and pull through two loops. And we're not going to finish this one with the green. We're going to switch back to the white and then pull through these two loops to finish our return pass. So that way we're ready with the white yarn. So that way we're ready with the white tool for the next row. So we are going to change. So we're going to go ahead and pull our green tool to the right edge here. And then pull up a loop with the white. And pull through these two loops to finish our return pass. And that completes the return pass for that short row. So remember, we're just alternating. You do a full row, then a short, then full, then short, then full, then short. And you do that all the way around. And we're going to end on a short row. So all of the ones in white will be your full row. All of the ones in green will be your short rows. So now we are going to work a full row. So now we're going to start our hook into this next vertical bar. So we don't work into that first one on the edge. So we find the next vertical bar and start our hook underneath it. Tool over and pull up a loop. Find your next vertical bar. Insert your hook underneath it. Tool over and pull up a loop. And this here, we don't work into that stitch. You see how the row kind of just drops off? And then there's that stitch that looks kind of elongated. That's the vertical bar that stretches up from the previous row. So you can see the row kind of just curves down and drops off. And looks like it goes right into that edge. You can see like that vertical bar comes right out of that edge. That's actually part of the horizontal bars. It's not a stitch there. That's part of the horizontal bars that are in between the vertical bars. Okay, so we're going to sort of hook into this vertical bar 
pull over and pull up a loop and then this next vertical bar insert your hook underneath it pull over and pull up a loop now you can see you have five loops on your hook then we're going to insert a hook into the center of the magic ring pull over and pull up a loop after you insert your hook into the center of the magic ring you should have six loops on your hook always good to check that before you do your return pass okay so we're ready to do our return pass tool over pull through two tool over pull through two loops tool over and pull through two loops tool over and pull through two we have two loops on our hook we're going to stop here because we want to change back to the green tool now i'm going to tool over with the green yarn and then pull through these two loops to finish my return pass okay so now we are going to work a short row so i'm going to go ahead and take this white tool and pull it to the edge here to the right and, and then i'm going to find my next vertical bar here not the one that's at the edge we don't work into that first one on the edge that's in line with this loop here we we'll find the next vertical bar and sort of hook underneath it and then tool over and pull up a loop and this is a short row and then find your next vertical bar and sort your hook underneath it tool over and pull up a loop find your next vertical bar and sort your hook underneath it tool over and pull up a loop so now I have four loops on my hook and I'm not going to work that last vertical bar because I'm stopping short of finishing the row because this is a short row that we're working on now with the green and then we're going to go ahead and do our return pass. So we're going to tool over and pull through two loops. Tool over, pull through two. And I'm not going to pull through these last two loops with the green tool because I'm going to change to the white tool now to finish my return pass. Okay, so now I'm going to take the working tool here for the green and pull it to the right. Then I'm going to tool over with the white tool and pull that through those last two loops to finish my return pass for my short row so now you just keep doing that just keep continuing the same thing over and over again we do the full rows the same way each time and we do the short rows the same way each time so now I'm gonna go ahead and do a full row so I'm gonna insert my hook underneath this vertical bar tool over and pull up a loop find the next one tool over pull up a loop I have my three loops on the hook and that's a good reminder when you're doing a full row with the white tool when, once you have your three loops then you know that you're finished with this part of the short row and you need to look for the next vertical bar that extends down to the previous row so I'm going to go ahead and insert my hook into that vertical bar there tool over and pull up a loop and then here's the next vertical bar just before the magic ring insert my hook into that vertical bar tool over and pull up a loop I now have five loops on my hook so I'm going to go ahead and insert my hook into the center of the magic ring tool over and pull up a loop and after you pull up a loop from the magic ring you'll have six loops on the hook I'm going to tool over and pull through two loops at a time until I have two loops remaining on my hook because I'm going to switch to the green tool okay so now to finish my return pass I'm going to go ahead and switch to the green tool so I'm going to pull this tool to the right and then tool over with the green and pull through those last two loops to finish my return pass for my full row and now I'm going to work under the next three vertical bars leaving this last one I'm going to stop short of finishing the row so I'm going to work in these next three I'm not going to work under that one so let's go ahead and do our forward pass working under the next three vertical bars okay so I have four loops on my hook and I stopped before doing that last one so now I'm ready to do my return pass for my short row so I'm going to tool over and pull through two tool over pull through two I have two loops remaining on my hook so I'm going to finish this return pass with the white tool so I'm going to go ahead and pull this to the right side of my work 
and then pull up a loop with the white tool and pull that through these last two loops to complete to complete my return pass for my short row. So now I have a loop with the white tool so I'm ready to do my forward pass with the white tool now and this is a full row. So I'm going to go ahead and work under and pull up loops. So I now have my three loops and then I'm going to insert my hook into this and then I'm going to insert my hook into this vertical bar and this one and then into the magic ring. Okay, so I'm going to insert my hook into this vertical bar here, pull up a loop, next one, pull up a loop. I have five loops on my hook. Now I'll go ahead and insert the hook into the magic ring, pull up a loop, and now I have six loops on my hook. So I'm going to go ahead and do my return pass. Tool over and pull through two. Pull over, pull through two. I'm going to pull through two loops at a time until I have two loops on my hook. And now I'm going to switch to the green tool. So I'm pulling the working tool with the white to the right. And then I'm going to pull up my green tool. I'm going to pull up a loop. I'm going to tool over and pull that through these two loops to finish my return pass. Okay, so I've completed my return pass for my full row. So the next row is a short row with the green tool. So I'm going to work underneath the next three vertical bars doing Tunisian simple stitches and I'm not going to work this last one. And then after I have four loops on my hook, then I'll do my return pass because this is a short row. So I'm going to work underneath the next three vertical bars pulling up loops. Okay, I'm not going to work under this one because this is the short row. Okay, and then I'm going to tool over, pull through two, tool over, pull through two, and then I'm going to leave these two here because now I'm going to switch back to the white tool because the next row is a full row. Go ahead and pull this to the right and pull up a loop with the white tool. Pull that and then I'm going to tool over with the white tool and pull that through to complete my return pass for my short row. So it's this, we're just going to repeat the same thing over and over again. Working a full row, then a short row, then we're going to do that all the way around. So I'm going to go ahead and do the next full row here. Okay, my three loops. Insert my hook into this vertical bar here, and then the next one, because this is a full row. So I have my five loops, so I'm going to insert my hook into the center of the magic ring. And when you work around your magic ring, you should always work around that tail as well. You go ahead and you work over that tail with the magic ring as well. Okay, so you want to make sure that when you're working into the magic ring that you have that tail wrapped around that magic ring and you work underneath that. You work over the tail as well. Okay, so now I'm going to start my hook into the magic ring, tool over, and pull up a loop. I have six loops on my hook, so I'm going to go ahead and do my return pass, tooling over and pulling through two loops at a time until I have two loops on my hook. Okay, I have two loops left, so now I'm going to Finish this return pass with the green tool. So I'm going to tool over, pull through, and that completes my and that completes my return pass for my full row. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that all the way around. So I'll go ahead and do these ones real quick. So this is the short row. Okay, so I stop short of that last vertical bar, tool over, pull through two, tool over, pull through two. Now I'm going to switch back to the white tool before I finish this return pass. And tool over, pull through. Okay, so that's my short row. 
So for this forward pass, I'm going to do a full row with the white tool. Okay, so I'm going to insert my hook underneath the vertical bar, pull up a loop, find the next vertical bar, pull up a loop, and then we're going to insert our hook into this loop, which is, which is actually in the previous row. Insert my hook underneath it, tool over, pull up a loop, find the next one, pull up a loop, You'll have five loops and then insert your hook into the center of the magic ring. Pull up a loop. And now I have my six loops, so I'm going to go ahead and do my return pass. Tool over and pull through two loops at a time until I have two loops remaining on my hook. Okay, so now I'm going to switch to the green tool. So I want to pull this to the right. And then pull up a loop with the green tool. So I'm going to tool over and pull through these last two loops to complete my return pass for the full row. Okay, so now I'm going to work my short row. So I'm going to work underneath the next three vertical bars doing Tunisian simple stitches. Okay, I'm not going to work underneath that next vertical bar, that last one before the magic ring, because this is a short row. So I'm going to stop short of finishing the row. I now have four loops on my hook. So now I'm going to do my return pass. Tool over, pull through two. Tool over, pull through two. I have two loops remaining on my hook. So now I'm going to switch back to the white tool. Okay, so I'm going to tool over and pull through these last two loops to complete my return pass for my short row. Okay, so now I'm going to do a forward pass, and this is a full row. So we're going to work underneath all of the vertical bars and into the magic ring. Okay, so I'm going to pull up a loop. So I'm going to find the vertical bar, tool over, pull up a loop. Find the next one, pull up a loop. And then here's the next vertical bar that extends down into the previous row. Tool over, pull up a loop. Tool over, pull up a loop. And then insert my hook into the center of the magic ring. Tool over and pull up a loop. So I have my six loops on my hook now. Tool over and pull through two loops at a time until you have two loops remaining on your hook since we need to change to the green. All right, my two loops. So I'm going to finish this return pass with the green. Tool over with the green. Okay, I'm going to tool over with the green and pull through these last two to finish my return pass for my full row. Okay, so I'm ready to do my short row now. So I'm going to work underneath the next three vertical bars, leaving this one unworked. Okay, so I have my four loops for my short row. I have my four loops, so now I'm ready to do my return pass. I'm going to tool over, pull through two loops at a time until I have two loops remaining on the hook. And now I'm going to switch back to the white tool. Okay, so now I'm going to finish this return pass by tooling over with the white tool and pulling through those two loops to complete my return pass for my short row. So this row is going to be a full row. Okay, so now this forward pass is going to be for a full row. So we're going to work underneath each vertical bar and also into the magic ring. Okay. And my three loops. So, so now I know I need to look for that vertical bar that extends down into the previous row. Set my hook underneath it. Tool over, pull up a loop. Find the next vertical bar that's just before the magic ring. Tool over, pull up a loop. And then I have my five loops, so I'm going to go ahead and insert my hook into the center of the magic ring. 
and pull up a loop. And now you'll see you have six loops. So now we're going to tool over and tool over and pull through two loops at a time until we have two loops on our hook. Since we want to switch back to the green tool. Okay, so I have my two loops on the hook. So now I'm going to switch back to the green tool. So now I'm going to tool over with the green tool and pull through these last two loops to complete my return pass for my full row. You can see how we're curving all the way around that magic ring to make a round dish scrubby. Okay, so I have 21 rows, so I just have three more rows to work, and then we'll be ready to pull the tail of the magic ring and seam the two rows together to make our round dish scrubby. Okay, so this one's going to be a short row, so I'm going to work underneath the vertical bars and pull up loops in the next three vertical bars. Okay, so I have four loops on my hook now. I'm not going to work this last vertical bar because I'm going to stop short of this row because this is a short row. So now we're going to go ahead and do our return pass. Tool over and pull through two loops at a time until you have two loops remaining on your hook and then we're going to switch back to the white tool. Alright now I'm going to go ahead and tool over with the white tool and pull through these last two loops to complete my return pass for my short row. Okay, so this next row is going to be a full row. So now we're going to work underneath each vertical bar and also we're going to pull up a loop from the magic ring. Alright, so find this vertical bar, tool over and pull up a loop, find your next vertical bar, Start your hook underneath it, tool over and pull up a loop. And then you see you have three loops on your hook. And then you're going to find the vertical bar that's in the previous row. So your short row, it looks like it drops off and just ends. So then you just follow that down to find that vertical bar. Insert your hook underneath it, tool over and pull up a loop. And leave your loops on the hook. And then Find the next vertical bar, insert your hook underneath it, tool over and pull up a loop. I now have my five loops on the hook, so now I'm going to insert my hook into the center of the magic ring, tool over and pull up a loop. So now I have, so now I have six loops on my hook. I'm going to tool over and pull through two loops at a time until I have two loops remaining on my hook. Okay. So we have just one more row to work. The last row is going to be with the green tool and that's going to be a short row because we're going to end with a short row. Okay, so now I'm going to pull this tail. So now I'm going to pull the tool for the working tool to the right of my work here and then pull up a loop with the green tool. So I'm going to tool over with the green and pull through these last two loops to complete my return pass for my full row here. Okay, so we're going to work the last row here. The last row is a short row and we're going to do that with the green tool. So we're going to stop short of that last stitch. So we're going to work underneath the next three vertical bars pulling up loops for our Tunisian simple stitches. So that's first one, find your next vertical bar, tool over, pull up a loop, find your next one, and then insert your hook underneath the next vertical bar, pull up a loop, and we're not going to work that last one. So we have our four loops, so we have finished the forward pass for our short row, so now we're going to do our return pass. We're going to tool over, pull through two loops, tool over, pull through two, now we have two loops remaining on our hook. Okay, and since this is the last row, we do not need to switch to the white tool. So, so we're going to complete this return pass 
with the green tool. So we're going to tool over and pull through these last two. So now we have completed our short row and now we have finished all of the rows for our dish scrubby. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut the tool. And I'm going to cut the tool and I'm going to leave a good sized tail because we are going to need this tail from the magic ring and a tail from the green tool as well to weave in to seam the two rows together here because we are some of the stitches are green and some of them are white so we want to make sure that we use the white tail to weave up through these stitches and then we're going to use the green to weave through the green stitches that way it looks nicer when we seam the two rows together okay so I'm going to go ahead and cut a tail leaving a little bit of a tail so I can sew it together here Okay, I'm not going to cut this, um, I'm not going to fasten off with the white tool just yet because after we seam these two rows together, we're going to work a border all the way around to finish our dish scrubby. So I'm going to leave this white tool still connected. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and tool over and pull through that loop. And then give it a tug to fasten off. So then I'm going to go ahead and pull the tail of the magic ring to close up that center circle and then that's going to bring these two edges together here, these two rows together. See that we're going to be able to seam these two edges together here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start with the tail from the magic ring and work our way up this way and then we're going to use this tail and work our way down the green stitches. So when you seam these two edges together, what we're going to be doing is you can see here is the first vertical bar in the center circle and here's the next circle of vertical bars and then the third one and so on. So what we want to do, so when we connect these together, we so what we want to do is when we seam them together we want to match up this vertical bar to this one. We want to match this vertical bar to this one here. And then this one will match here. And this one will match to this one. So let me show you how to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and insert this into the darning needle here. Okay. So what we want to do is I'm going to bring this tail to the front. So I'm just going to insert it through, bring it to the front here. So I'm going to bring it through to the front. And then you're going to find this first vertical bar. So if you follow this circle here, this vertical bar here, we're going to insert the darning needle from the bottom up this way towards the edge underneath the vertical bar. Fold the tail up like that, just like that. And then you find this one on the other side that matches up in that same first circle there in the center. Insert your hook underneath that. Insert your hook underneath that vertical bar. And then pull that tail up through it. And that brings those together. And then here's your next vertical bar. We're still going to use the white tail of the we're still going to use the white tail because it's these two vertical bars. That way it matches these two vertical bars. So we're going to go ahead and insert underneath this vertical bar and pull that through and then find that one that is in line with that one so here's your first circle then your second so you can see that's the next one right there that will connect those together and then this seam here where the edge is that's gonna overlap on it so you're not gonna see that that's gonna hide that so now you're gonna insert your downing needle underneath this one and pull that up and that connects that vertical bar to that one. See how it makes it nice and neat and it continues to circle? It's a nice way to weave that up and it looks really good. Okay, so now I'm going to stop with the white tail because now 
we are here where the green vertical bars are. So what we're going to do is we're going to weave down this way now. So I'm going to thread this one up. Okay, so we're going to start with, here's the edge one. That's going to be in line with that one. Insert it from the back here, just like that. Okay, and then we want to insert a hook down with this way. And then down, here's this next one right here. Here's the edge. You want to find this one that matches up to that one. Go down this way. And then you see how it brings those two together right there. Okay, and then go to this one here. Insert it from this way down towards the center of the magic ring. Pull that through that vertical bar there. And then find the one next to it that's in line with it to continue the circle. Because that way it continues the circle while it that continues this circle. So insert it underneath this vertical bar and all right so now you can see that we have connected all of the vertical bars in a nice circle looks really neat that way we just matched up the vertical bars to continue the circle all the way around so now what we want to do is we want to take this tail and we're going to go right through here to the back because we're going to weave it in through the back so it looks nicer instead of weaving it through the front. So we want to hide that. See how nice that looks where we matched up these bars here to continue the circle? It looks so much nicer that way. Okay, so now I'm going to pull this one through to the back. Just make sure I pull that tight. And then insert that through, pull it to the back. And I'll weave these tails in along the back. And then all that's left to do now is to just work an edging all the way around. So that's why we did not want to fasten off with the working tool. So I'll go ahead and weave these tails in real quick first. So when you weave these in, you want to just hide them in the back. So now I have finished weaving in the tails along the back and you can see the back doesn't look quite the same as the front so if you want you can make two of them and connect them together if you want to do that or you can even make one with the stripes and then a solid one and put that on the back and that would be really cute too if you wanted a double thick dish scrubby but if you just want a single layer, you just do it like that and it looks just fine. But you will notice that the back does look different from the front. So if that is something that you don't like the look of, then I would recommend do a double-sided dish grubby and either make two of them exactly the same and connect them together or do one with the solid, which I think really looks nice. Okay, so I still have the working tool still connected I didn't fasten off and that's because now I'm gonna work a border all the way around so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert my hook into this stitch and what's really nice when you work with the Tunisian simple stitches you'll notice that your edges look really neat and you see these V stitches all along the edge so it makes it really easy to work into I'm gonna chain one and do a slip stitch into the back loop of the next one chain one slip stitch into the back loop of the next stitch chain one and then I'm going to work slip stitches in every single stitch with a chain one in between so I did a slip stitch chain one slip stitch into the back loop of this one 
chain one, slip stitch into the back loop of this one, chain one. So I'm going to do that all the way around. I'm going to slip stitch and then chain one. I'm going to do that all the way around. So I'm going to do a slip stitch, chain one, slip stitch, chain one. So I'm going to do a slip stitch in every single stitch all the way around, working in just a back loop with a chain one in between. So I did a slip stitch. I'm going to chain one, slip stitch into the next stitch, chain one, slip stitch into the next stitch, chain one, and I'm going to do that all the way around. Okay, and then chain one, join with the slip stitch to that first one that we did when we began the round. And now I have finished the border for my dish scrubby. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut a tail to fasten off. Then I'm just going to pull over, pull that through to give it a tug to fasten off, and then I just need to weave in that tail. Now we have finished making our round Tunisian simple stitch dish scrubby. I hope that you enjoyed the tutorial today. I want to thank you for watching and have a great day.